officially good morning and welcome to some yoga Pilates fusion. So I am going to use a blanket today, <laughs> even though right now it's currently occupied. All right, so I'm going to roll my blanket up so that I've got a little sort of, um, they have these pillows called pranayama bolsters <laughs> that are made specifically for this purpose. And uh, so that's kind of what I'm recreating here, just a couple of inches, four to six inches wide, and then the length of my spine. Okay. So if you don't want to do that, you can just lie down. Oh. And then figure out if you are using the blanket, where's the best spot for it? Sometimes I like it closer to my hips and sometimes a little closer to my shoulder blades. No lower today. Okay. And then decide on a leg position, out straight, feet together, feet on the floor. Sometimes that's the best one. Then we're just gonna pause for some breathing. Now, <laughs> I've tried to get some movement in my rib cage and one of the things I like about the blanket coming down the, the back is that there's relatively, yeah, like there's room for my ribs to expand in all directions, basically. If you're just laying on the floor, it might just be that the ribs floor open kind of at the front and that's fine. Just get some movement going. to do later just kind of go away <laughs> it's gonna be there waiting for us but we don't have to think about it during this class time set that agenda off to the side for now do two more breaths. I'm finally feeling like a little bit more ease in this kind of movement in my ribs. That's generally what I wait for. Okay, so I'm going to roll to the side and take this oh, blanket up from behind me and then give myself enough room that I can extend my arms overhead without running into anything. <laughs> now you might want a few moments just to experience the change from having had a blanket underneath. For me the blanket leaves a kind of distinct impression <laughs> sort of down the center and slowly all the muscle tissue and the skin and everything kind of settles back where it came from. And as that happens there's kind of a pleasant oh, nice kind of <laughs> sense of freedom in my back, <laughs> which I rather appreciate. So I've got my feet in constructive rest, which is the way that I like to do this because it keeps everything really neutral. My pelvis, my low back all have a nice neutral curve. Um, you can also have the legs outstretched if it doesn't pull your pelvis forward, which it does mine a bit. So um, as long as that's all neutral, <laughs> we're 
we're going to be in good shape. So we're going to do a little bit of work for our shoulders. Um, so we'll reach down towards the heels. And then as you reach the arms up, try to, it's almost like your shoulder blades are sort of propelling your arm bones. So the shoulder blades come all the way up and then they go all the way back and slide at the very end here back into the center. So just reaching up toward the ceiling, reaching overhead and trying to move mostly from the shoulders. So it feels almost like my arm bones are along for the ride. And do that one more time. I'm trying to see if there's a difference between the two as I, you know, kind of come up and over. I'm just feeling left side, right side, noticing if there's any sticky places or places that are a little sore as I move through here. Now I'm just going to come up to straight up. All right, so right there, my shoulder blades right now are sort of off to the side. So I'm going to pull them up underneath me, kind of tuck them in where they belong, and then we'll let them reach out again to the sides and then pull them underneath me. Noticing any resistance there. Oh, I feel like this it's even one more like that. Oh. Now keeping the shoulder blades tucked in as best I can, I'm gonna grab my upper right arm, try to pull that arm to the left, but I'm gonna hold the shoulder blade in place. So it doesn't look like much is happening, but I am fiercely trying to pull my right arm all the way over to the left side and just as fiercely holding my shoulder blade in place with my upper back. I find this to be one of the best um, sort of isometric uh, shoulder releases. It makes the muscles between my shoulder blade and my upper back seem to sort of have a nicer relationship with each other. <laughs> so two more breaths here. I'm starting to feel like I'm losing the fight. <laughs> one more breath. Release that side and once again reach up and come back and now I can really feel the difference between the two. This right side was a little sticky before and now it's moving a little bit more smoothly around my upper back. So I'm going to tuck my shoulder blades in nice and snug and do the opposite side. So grabbing the left arm, pulling it across and also simultaneously securing that shoulder blade. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Okay, so I'm still kind of holding it steady. And start to feel how my right arm is starting to win. So I'm going to do two more breaths. This feels like my shoulder is slowly moving out. Okay, so then I'm going to reach up and reach back in and stretch up and back in. And now my shoulders feel a little bit more even. So I feel like I've done oh, that part of that release. Now, the main thing that this does for me is that instead of my shoulder slightly leaning forward, it feels like it sort of falls back naturally. So I've done a release for the muscles that kind of hold my shoulder blade um, up against my back a little bit so that there's just a little bit more of a sense that the shoulder kind of rights itself. So notice if that's true for you. It might not be the exact right one. We're going to do a couple of other shoulder things along the way. And we'll see which one is your jam. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to take a moment here, bring the knees into the chest. Oh, give yourself just a little back massage. Now I need to go back up my mat because this is going to bring me down. Not, not emotionally, but physically. <laughs> so we're going to put the knees right over the hips, which means I have to use my low um, abdominal muscles to kind of hold that steady. That's going to be my starting point. I'm gonna to try to keep my shoulders nice and steady on the floor as I come over to the right. I'm gonna curl my knees in, but you may wanna instead extend one or both of the legs. Coming back to the center, I'm gonna pick my knees up toward my chest and then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so every time I'm returning to that neutral position, so I have to use my abdominal muscles to <laughs> do this little, twisty move back and forth. Oh, one of my favorites. Okay, 
it's fun and it warms up the abdominals. <laughs> What's not to like? I'm going to do one more set of these. All right, now I'm going to take my left leg, wrap it around my right leg so that I've got kind of an eagle going on there. And then I'm going to bring my legs around to the right. So I've got a twist happening. Now, some of you might be able to take this foot and hook it around the back of your calf. I can't quite do that, so I'm going to hook mine around this pillow. And then, settling my shoulders back down onto the floor, I'm going to give myself a nice big stretch across this chest muscle and also this hip by kind of rolling with my <laughs> obliques, trying to roll my hip towards that right side while I simultaneously try to roll my shoulder towards the left. Leaks do both of those jobs. <laughs> I'm trying to access both layers. breath here. Now I'm going to roll all the way onto my right side. I'm going to use this pillow for my head. You could also use a blanket or whatever you've got. I just want to make sure I've got enough room to make a circle all the way around. Now you can put the arm a little higher and sort of draw a funnel shape and that may be the right one for the shoulder. You can come almost to level if you like. So what we're trying to do is get every muscle in the shoulder moving um, without pinching the nerves that come out of the neck. <laughs> so if your fingers go numb or tingly or there's any sort of pinching, definitely change the angles. So we're going to reach into that circle all the way around. I'm going to do one more circle in this direction. And normally I just do these in one direction, but I'm going to switch it up today and circle the opposite direction as well. See if I have a favorite. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do one more of these. All right, once my arm gets kind of back to my center, I'm going to come back around. That arm a little shake and then just to see <laughs> if there's a difference between my two arms and I will say that my left arm feels longer than my right arm right now um, and uh, you know just a little different <laughs> a muscle feels different all right so I'm gonna hook my right leg over the top of my left leg and again maybe when you come over you might find it nicer to not have anything like I'm gonna use this pillow again but you might not need anything at all or want Okay, so now I'm rolling my upper back towards the floor so my right shoulder gets closer to the ground, and then I'm bringing my hip over to the left. I'm trying to do this kind of two direction twist here. We'll pause for a few moments. Oh. Feel that muscle fatigue of really trying to do these <laughs> work set again. So I'm going to do two more breaths. And then I'm going to 
unwind this. And again, I'll do the other side. And I just need to make sure that I've got a nice um, circle. Okay, so I'm laying on my left side and now I'm gonna see what I can do with the right side here. So again, I'm trying to kind of stretch into this circle. Like if I feel anything pinchy, I'm gonna change the angles. Right now, everything feels pretty good, but that can shift. All right, I'm gonna come around one more time and then I'm gonna switch the direction. One more of these circles. Once my arm comes back into sort of, you know, like where it would be for mountain pose, I'm just gonna roll myself back to the middle. Okay. All right. So I'll get myself settled in here. <laughs> I think I'm mostly in the middle of the screen. All right, so just taking a moment to notice any effect of the shoulder work. Um, <laughs> right now my, my shoulders feel a little broader, my arms a little longer, that's interesting. All right. So we're gonna bring the torso into a flexed spine position. So I'm curling myself up into a little bit, so you know, hugging in my navel and then lifting my shoulders off the mat. And again, some of us can do this really easily without a lot of extra neck muscle work, but in the event that that feels problematic, just put your hands behind your head and let your head press into your hands so you really have to use your abdominal muscles to create the curve and you're not pulling from the neck, okay? We're gonna bring the legs up, lift them straight up. Again, you, if your arms are free, you can reach up toward your heel Otherwise, you can keep your hands back behind your head. We're just gonna take one leg down and one leg up. So we've got two straight legs reaching into both and then we're gonna curl up that little extra bit from the abdominals, getting rid of all the air so we can get the um, diaphragm out of the way. Stretch through both legs. One more set. Bring in the knees in. We're gonna take ourselves, maybe you can put your hands then underneath your hips. That's gonna be the most supported way. Arms beside you, a little bit less supported. And then whew, leaving your hands behind your head. And it's gonna give you the most challenge to hold this steady pelvis here as we lower the legs. So choose the one that's right for you. Glue the heels together, glue the thighs together. We're gonna to lower the legs for four, three, two, one. Draw the navel in, three, two, one, and come back. Lower four, three, two, one. Navel in, three, two, one, and return. Lower, three, two, one. Navel, three, two, one, return, lower, three, two, one, navel, three, two, one, return, lower, four, three, two, one, navel, three, two, one, return, one more time, lower, three, <laughs> two, one, hug, three, <laughs> two, one, return. Oh. All right, friends. So you have two choices to get yourselves to a seated position. You can do some roll up where you stretch yourself out long. Oh. Roll up to a seated position. Oh. Sit up tall, stretch over the legs. 
come back, curl in the spine, and roll down nice and slow. Oh. <laughs> if possible, avoiding those little places where you have to kind of use your hip flex just to throw yourself through that movement. So that's possibility number one. Possibility number two is that you roll like a ball. <laughs> so that's up to you. Not everybody loves rolling like a ball. So the roll-up might be more your jam. All right. So rolling like a ball is sort of like boat pose. Oh, and a carnival ride. Had a baby. And I'm going for the smoothest ride I can. By really drawing my abs in. Do one more of those. Now, if you're still rolling up, carry on until you're ready. <laughs> and then when you're ready, just come to a seated position and join me here. I'm going to try to. my hair. <laughs> All right, we're going to do the saw, which is kind of a hamstring stretch. So we're going to be kind to ourselves. One of the things I've been doing recently, I kind of like it. You don't have to do this if you don't have the props for it, but if I put a block next to each of my feet, it gives me two things. One, I'm trying to keep my toes pointing straight up. And so it gives me a little bit of feedback when my legs start to kind of splay out a little bit. So the idea <laughs> is that we're gonna operate mostly from the hips and the, um, you know, the up center muscles, the abdominal muscles, and we're not gonna muck about with our hips too much. So I'm gonna try to keep that feedback. And then it also gives me something like there's a little touched point with my hands. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep my toes pointing straight up. Now, some of us may wanna have a bend in the knee and you may even put something underneath to sort of hold yourself steady. Arms out, we're gonna turn and then lean in towards that foot. And again, I'm noticing like that foot wants to display, so I'm gonna try to hold it. One, two, three, and then come on up. Turn the other way. One, two, three. Sit nice and tall. One, two, three. One, two, three, nice and tall. So I'm only going as far as my hamstrings say yes to right now. Oh. And yours might say yes to a more forward movement or a little less. One, two, three, we're gonna do two more sets. One, whoop, hi, two, three. One, two, Three, get nice and tall in between. One, <laughs> two, three, and one, two, three. All right, I did mostly good <laughs> with keeping my feet tall. All right, friends, we're gonna come to a all fours position. Give ourselves a few rounds of cat. Sometimes I do more movement just with the lower part of my back. Sometimes I try to get that movement going all the way up through to the shoulders. Today I'm doing the whole thing if I can help it. When you're ready, you're gonna take yourself into downward dog and if you want to do a little bit of plank work and stuff before you get to downward dog you can do that once you're in downward dog if you like that pose take a few moments walk in your heels up and down spend a little bit of time with it if it's not your jam then just use it to get yourself on your feet 
and do other things <laughs> that are your jam. I think the first downward dog of the day is always <laughs> a little bit stickier than normal. Oh. Or at least than the ones that are going to come later. <laughs> I definitely feel it in my calf muscles. rushing you but when you eventually do <laughs> wind up on your feet and you stood up or standing up <laughs> whichever verb conjugation is correct there <laughs> oh we're gonna eventually kind of give ourselves a little shake and then find a mountain pose <clears throat> so this is always gonna be the front of my mat the other end is always gonna be the back or the top and the bottom I use the words interchangeably quite often but those landmarks are gonna stay the same. And then that way I can turn my feet in whatever direction and I know I'm always gonna come back to this top spot at the end of this mountain pose. Or at the end of the sweet sequence, right? Come back to mountain pose. So notice what mountain pose feels like right now. Does it feel like it's pushing you forward or back? Is it really even in the feet? Does it feel like your shoulders need a little extra work? Do they feel like they're already ready to be in the pose? Just notice. Notice if you tend to kind of jab your ribs forward. See if this can be really balanced through the abdominals. And then see what that feels like. All right, we're gonna take a nice big breath, reach the arms overhead. Oh, grabbing that right wrist, give it a little stretch over to the left. Coming back, choose a balancing pose for yourself. It can be an eagle, a tree, dancer, whatever you like. I'm not sure how wobbly I am. I'm going <laughs> a little bit conservative, taking one more breath. I'm gonna pick up this left leg and step myself back to warrior two. Now, take a moment just to make sure I like the way my hips are arranged. Sometimes when I step back I like the arrangement, sometimes I need a little extra support, <laughs> a little extra movement. So finding that warrior two, and then I'm going to come back to reverse oh, and over to side angle so we get those nice mermaids in. Really trying to stretch from the center of my abdominal region there. Oh. Now I'm going to straighten out my leg. I'm just going to go right into my triangle pose, but you may decide you want to go back first and that's fine. I might utilize a few props. So I'm doing a little bind with my upper arm. Now some people can reach all the way around, kind of grab the top of their thigh. I can't quite get that far. So I'm just bringing it around as far as it'll go. I'm kind of hugging the arm bones to my side there. One more chance for a little shoulder opener. <laughs> One more breath here. All right, so I'm gonna bend my knee and then I'm gonna swing myself around so that my feet become parallel to each other. That may not be the right place to land, especially if you feel any binding in your knee or in your hip socket. It might be better to have the toes turned out. But start somewhere. And for me, this is a much stronger stretch there on the backs of my legs. One side's a little looser than the other because of that triangle. So I'm trying to go <laughs> Not as far as the triangle leg wants me to go, but just the right amount for the other leg. Oh, I'll still have another opportunity to do more here <laughs> second time around. <clears throat> so 
And one more breath. Now, I'm gonna bring my feet in a little bit and then take a squat. Now you can go deep or keep your hips up a little higher. One more breath there. And then I'm gonna spin around and take myself back into downward dog. <clears throat> now you can stay right here with downward dog and just pause or you can do this sun salutation. Now we're gonna do a side plank. So I'm coming forward. I'm gonna put my right knee down. So I've got a little extra support, but you might do your side plank without doing that. Nice tall lift. Coming back to center, finding your plank and lowering down. Coming into the back bend that you like best. <laughs> and then back into downward dog. And then that's where we all join up together. Take that right leg in the air. I'm gonna sink into my left heel a little bit. And then I'm stepping my right foot forward. Wherever it lands, I'm gonna put my weight on that leg. Pick up the left one. Try not to knock over my plants. <laughs> as I take a half moon balance here. I'm kind of picking myself up from this hip. One more breath there. And then I'm gonna bring this left foot down, come up halfway, <laughs> fold, and then all the way to standing. Nice big stretch. Oh. And then I'm gonna to return to mountain pose at the top of my mat and see if there's a difference. <laughs> between the two sides. Oh goodness. All right. And almost always, <laughs> there is. <laughs> Just notice what's true for you. <laughs> My right side feels fluffier. <laughs> All right, yogis. Nice big breath, arms reach up. Grabbing that left wrist, give yourself a little stretch over to the right. Oh, coming back all the weight on that left leg. Choose your balance. One more breath here. And then I'm gonna pick up my right leg and step back into warrior two. Again. Giving myself a chance to, I want to feel like my joints feel really cared for <laughs> in this pose. This can be a tricky one on the hip joint. I want to take that time to get it lined up just right for me. Okay. Oh, doing a little back, stretching out <laughs> my left side and then, oh, stretching out my right side. I'm gonna do two more of those. All right, so this is gonna turn into my triangle. And again, I'll invite you to come to triangle in whatever way you like best for today. And my big toe and my pinky toe down, kind of stretching my legs away from each other <laughs> within reason. Just kind of lengthening out through the crown of my head. Got a lot of activity going on, <laughs> but subtle. Not clear it's visible. Two more breaths. Now I'm going to swing myself around again. So I start with parallel feet. If that doesn't feel good, I change it. And now I've done the, the triangle on this side so I can feel the difference there. So it gives me a little bit more room to fold. And then you can add anything else you like to the pose. Doing these little subtle side stretches from one side to the other. Oh. One more breath. 
All right, I'm gonna wiggle my feet in a bit. And again, you can do more of a higher level squat there <laughs> or lower as the case may be. One more breath here. And then that's gonna turn into downward dog. All right, so again, you can pause here. I'm gonna come to the plank, take a side plank on that left side. Nice big breath. Coming back to regular plank, lowering down, coming into your cobra or your up dog, whatever you prefer. Back to down dog, and then we're gonna take that left leg up, sink into that right <laughs> heel. Ooh. And then when you step your left foot forward, that's gonna be your point <laughs> of lift or your half moon balance, your point of balance, <laughs> wherever it landed. One more breath, and then I'm going to bring my right foot in, come up halfway, and fold, and come all the way up to standing. Nice big stretch. Find my way to mountain pose, and again, check in and see, is there a difference? Feel a little taller. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> mm. All right, yogis. <laughs> We're gonna take a nice big breath, reach both arms overhead. Oh, fold forward. Come up halfway. Now, we're gonna lengthen out, put the weight in the right leg and pick up the left foot. So, if it would help to use furniture or blocks, do that, and we're gonna extend that left leg back. You can keep the support or let go of it. You start to fall catch <laughs> and come back. So we've got a warrior three of some sort. I'm trying to keep my hips as level as I can. One more breath. All right, I'm gonna reach back and try to come to a high lunge not too wobbly. If your high lunge is really wobbly side to side, move your right foot a little to the right, left foot a little to the left, and we'll kind of pause there. Now I'm going to straighten out my front leg and send my left heel a little closer to the ground, and then I'm going to come back to my lunge. You could bend your right knee here if you like, or bend your left knee here if you like as well. And then both legs are straight, heel pressing down, back to the lunge. I'm gonna add a little twist to this lunge. You could bring that left elbow all the way around if you like. Hmm. One more breath. Coming back around, I'm gonna straighten out my front leg and fold toward it. Bring in my back foot in a little bit so I can get both my feet all the way onto the floor. And again, I'm gonna kind of press down my big toe and my little toe. <laughs> I'm trying to claw up my feet a lot, but just to create a little structure there for my um, arches. And then nice deep breaths. more breath here. All right, so we're going to step back to down dog. If you want to throw in a quick sun salutation, you can do that. I'm going to take my right leg up and give it a little shake out, and then I'm bringing it into a pigeon. Now, you can flip your pigeon upside down, do it on your back instead, or do a seated version. Because oh, this version might be too much.
So whether you did the sun salutation and then came into pigeon <laughs> or went directly to pigeon without passing go, <laughs> either one is good. <laughs> we'll just pause here and breathe. So I'm going to lean into my right hip and then I'm bringing my left leg around and putting it up in front. Now I like both my sit bones level, so I just put my shin in line with my shin, but some of you may want to go all the way around the thigh and then we're going to twist around to the left. I'll just try to get regal here. <laughs> and I'm kind of hugging this leg toward me with my arm and resisting with that leg. So again, I get a little isometric release this time for my outer hip. One more breath here. All right, we're gonna do some side work. I'm gonna lay on my right side, so I'm gonna unwind my legs and roll myself over here. I might need those blocks again in a minute, but <laughs> for now, I'll get them out of my way. Okay, so laying on my side, I just wanna make sure that this hip is stacked over the one below it and not leaning forward or back. Okay? And then the same thing with my shoulder. So I want this shoulder positioned over the one below it, not forward or back. Try to get that centered torso, and then we're gonna hug in the sides of the waist and draw the navel in, and that's gonna help hold us steady. So this top leg is gonna come up and then down. When we get to about hip height, we're gonna swing it forward. Then you're gonna go up again and swing it backward. So up forward, up, backward. And we're trying to hold the torso nice and steady the whole time. Forward, up, backward, <laughs> up, forward, up, backward. We'll do two more sets. Up, forward, Backward again, I'm hugging in through my abs to try to create as best I can a nice structure here. Ooh. From which to do this, and I'm gonna come back and go up. And then when I come down, I'm gonna put my foot on the floor. Now you can have your legs stretched out instead of putting the foot on the ground here. And then I'm gonna lift that right leg up, make sure I'm still lined up, and pulse that right leg up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then I'm gonna make a circle under here for five, four, three, two, one. Going the other way, five, four, three, two, one. Coming back to the center, I'm gonna bring that leg down. Now, I'm gonna come back to my seated position put my left foot on the ground, and some of you will do this much more gracefully than I will, but we're gonna try to stand up on that left leg. Ooh. And from there, create our warrior three. <laughs> so I'm gonna stretch myself out, see if I can let go <laughs> with one or both hands. 
Ooh, can you feel that left hip? Having done all that side work, it might be a little bit more tricky. Two more breaths. And then I'm gonna step myself back into my lunge. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so straightening out my front leg, sending my left or right heel toward the ground, and then coming back to my lunge. And then straightening, sending that heel toward the ground, coming back to the lunge and adding a twist. Ooh. Ooh. One more breath. Coming back, straightening out my front leg and folding over it. And again, you may want to adjust your right foot so you can get both feet all the way on the floor. And again, I'm kind of stretching the mat between my feet, pressing my big toe, my pinky toe into the ground, leaving the others as soft as I can. So I activate my arches without causing trouble. <laughs> and then seeing where, what's the right amount of stretch for here. One more breath here, and then we're going to step back to down dog. Oh, and again, you can add a sun salutation there if you like, or come directly into the pigeon. the <laughs> best case scenario is. Oh. I'm trying to relax my mouth and my face shoulders. <laughs> Sometimes with a pose that's a little spicy, I find my body kind of tensing up when I get to it. Just trying to counter that with some conscious relaxation. Sometimes that does mean that we're in a little too deep. <laughs> so sometimes it's that and sometimes for me it's just habitually ugh, I tense up anytime I land somewhere. I have to yeah, you know, I have to be the one who decides which was which. And so do you. <laughs> do your best. We'll take two more breaths. And then I'm bringing my right leg around and I'm going to take that twist to my right. So again, being as regal and tall as I can. More breaths. And I'm coming out of here and I'm going to land on my left side. <laughs> as best I can. <laughs> I'm going to get my hips stacked, get my shoulders stacked up, hugging through the waist, <laughs> and then I'm taking that leg up and forward, up, and backward. Trying to hold steady. <laughs> so swinging forward enough to challenge myself and backward enough to challenge myself without smacking into my furniture. <laughs> There's the space, uh, potential space <laughs> changes here that we're making. <laughs> Right, 
open two more of these. bringing that leg around. Again, you might change that arrangement just a little, get my hips and my shoulders back to neutral, draw my navel in, lift that left leg and pulse it up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then I'm circling that leg for 5, 4, <laughs> 3, 2, one, go in the other direction for five, four, I've got blocks in my way, hold on, <laughs> three, <laughs> two, one, and then we're coming back. Now we're going to roll into our back and you might need a moment <laughs> just to sort of rinse out everything. And essentially we're in mountain pose, we're just lying down. Why isn't it called Sleeping Mountain? I always want to know. Um, <laughs> instead of corpse pose, it could be Sleeping Mountain pose. Reclining Mountain pose. All right, when you're ready, we're going to take ourselves through a series of bridge poses. So I'm going to go up, swing my hips side to side, and then come down as best I can one vertebrae at a time. If you want, you can substitute going up, and then lowering the leg and bringing it up. And I would do like four to six of those on one side and then do the other side. So it's up to you which version of the bridge you do. And I'm gonna go up, swing it around, and then come down. All right, so for me, that's a set, right? <laughs> I'm gonna do about five, hopefully I'm gonna do about five more of those. <laughs> My hamstrings may have other ideas. One more before my hamstrings cramp up. <laughs> you might still be working on yours, you might be done. When you're done, bring your knees up to your chest. Give yourself a little, oh, <clears throat> a little hug, a little happy baby maybe. <clears throat> Grabbing hold of the feet or the big toes. You can keep the heels together or separate them. We're trying to keep the <coughs> spine as neutral as possible. <coughs> this is a little bit like a squat for the knees and the hips. And if squatting is not your jam, maybe it hurts your knees or it hurts your low back, this might be an option as an alternative because we sort of bring ourselves into a similar relationship with the hips and the legs. Oh, all right, friends, it's time for Shavasana. <laughs> if you would rather do like, put your legs up on the couch or up on a chair or even up the wall, you can substitute that for, <laughs> hold on, I give myself a little more room. <laughs> you can substitute that for this reclining mountain. <laughs> Uh, corpse pose. Oh. As long as we oh, let go <laughs> and relax once we arrive, that's the important bit. <coughs> So we're letting the shoulders relax and the hips oh, 
legs and the arms. And sometimes core work gets me kind of all fired up, <laughs> a little uh, feeling a little antsy. So I try to just let myself relax into that little bit of extra energy. And I'll put it to good use when we're done here, <laughs> I hope. Some of you often sign off with me at this point, so if you are, namaste to you, by the way. <laughs> but if you can stay, do. It's nice to give yourself a moment to just relax before you go into your day. Take a moment and a nice deep breath, yogis. Let go with a big sigh. <sighs> when you're ready, you can wiggle and stretch. Oh, curl up into a ball and give yourself a little hug. <laughs> and then when you're ready, come to a seated position. <laughs> and we'll say goodbye to each other with a nice big breath. Inhale. <sighs> Thank you for joining me. Namaste.